This is why you're not getting any dates. Let's go over it. I've got five nouns to pretty much describe every situation where somebody's not getting a date. And you might be looking at me and thinking, really, this guy? Who's he to be giving dating advice? And I agree. I'm not your typical individual who can really give you all the success tricks. I'm just the guy who's probably gone through the same struggles that you are going through, have gone through. I've probably experienced it as well. I've gone on a good handful of dates and I've dated several women and I've had serious relationships and long-term relationships. So I can definitely talk to some of the things that I've experienced. But this should be helpful for you if you're not able to get a first date, second date, third date, more dates. There's a few little things that I'm noticing as maybe a root cause of of dating woes. So here we go. Noun number one, emotions. You're mentally unstable, you're flaking, you're frustrated with the dating scene, you're angry, you're not happy about where you are in life, you want to be settled down, scheduling plans is hard, one excuse after another, and these are the things that are going through your head. And these are emotions, these are feelings. And there's a whole slew of them, and they're holding you back. And you're basically saying, eh, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to just skip today and not bother with the dating world. And it's an easy way out. Uh, you know, dating's hard. Like, let's just put the facts out there. It's hard for a lot of people. And for other people, it's very easy because they have the natural talents or the natural traits, and uh, it just comes off easily for them. But a lot of people have this list of emotions that literally get in the way, and, and it causes last-minute changes. It causes different thoughts and behaviors, and it basically gets in your way. So you are essentially the enemy of your own desires, right? So a lot of this overthinking and emotional feelings, whether you're a man or woman, it's, it's all irrelevant. And I'm going to try to go through these nouns and make it apply to anyone, man, woman, whoever is trying to get more dates doesn't doesn't matter this can apply to anyone so hopefully this is helpful but you just need to go into the dating world with a mindset that you're going out tonight or this afternoon or this morning whenever your date is and you're gonna have fun and whatever the person is or whatever hold hold ups you have about the individual you just let it go and you say i'm gonna have fun tonight at the very least, I'm on a date by myself in case they flake. At the very least, you're going to have fun at this set time that you've agreed upon with somebody else. And you just you just go out there and try to stop thinking so much. And I get it. It's just too easy to think about things. But you just have to have fun, right? So let's get into noun two, which it kind of ties into what we just went through, but the noun is idealism. The world is so full of itself in the 21st century. Sorry, the world is full of itself. There, I said it. You have this ideal of what a man or woman should be, right? You, you have a very specific set of qualities you're looking for. Some of them are perhaps very absurd, and they have been defined, predefined, 
through social media, the dating apps, basically what you're witnessing out in the world. You, you're you watching content, content that's not quite reality, or it's warping. It is reality because those people are real, but it's also being warped, right? And you throw artificial intelligence into things. Well, then what is real, right? We don't, we don't really know, but this digital world is warping your mind and it's creating an idealistic society. It's creating a society where you have to be Brad Pitt or Amy Adams at the very least for you to even consider going on the date with that individual. Do you think that's a reasonable expectation? Or who's the other guy? That Henry Henry Cavill. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But that guy, it seems like people are clamoring over him on social media. And I'm sure you can name any woman out there and there's a bunch of guys that are obsessing over these women and it's it's sickening to see because it's not really a good percentage of what you could attract of what you could attain you're talking about 0.00001% chance of getting somebody like a Brad Pitt it's like celebrity status, super high level fame, and you're striving for that. So I don't really, I don't know what your intentions are, what your plans are, but that's a very challenging goal to set for yourself. It's almost an impossible goal. And that's literally what's holding you back from going on a date because you're already saying to yourself, is this individual this absurd standard that you've set right and i'll say it again this is for men and women right you you essentially know more about the date than their mom does before you even go on the date you know everything about them i mean these dating profiles you you can learn everything that you want you can know their star sign. You can know their political leanings. You know everything about them. There's no need to even have a conversation when you go on the date. Actually, this is why the dates aren't as exciting. Is because what's going to unfold? You already know everything. What are you there for? Um, so it becomes more difficult to have quality conversations, even if you were to get on that first date. And then what are you going to talk about? Uh, and again, you, maybe you'll find the one, that, that individual where you can have continued conversations and have some shared interests. And that's great and all. But you're basically of, an, of a complete understanding of an individual that you haven't even met yet. You have a very clear picture inside your head. And it's, it's this idealistic picture and then if you do meet them and they don't for some reason meet up to the standards of their own biography that they've written for themselves or they don't quite look like the photos or uh, then it's not matching with your ideology with your expectation so then you are disappointed before you even start the date the first the first look of the individual, you let out a big sigh. Like, oh, you don't do the facial expression, but you can see it in your breath. Like, you don't even want to be in the date before it even starts. Yeah. And that happens more often than not, thanks to the dating apps. So, like, how do you fix this warped worldview? Go on a date with a homeless person. Go on a date with a drug addict. Go on a date with an alcoholic. Go on a date with a smoker or a, a weed weed individual. Go on those dates and and really get a taste of of the world around us, a parts of the world, and and see see what what 
what could happen happen there, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm half kidding on that one, but half being honest, because a lot of people are basically shooing away somebody who could very well be an amazing individual, and they're shooing them away for no reason. See, that individual who's not Justin Bieber, that could be your Selena Gomez. You don't know. You don't know. But you do have to give it a chance. So, yeah, that's the second noun, idealism, getting in the way. Okay? Noun number three, invisibility. So, more people are isolated and alone than ever before. That's the reality. Um, I don't see this getting any better. As you get older, you have less friends, you go on less outings, life becomes serious. So as a result, the dating world becomes a little bit more difficult as well. If you hit your 30s, then that can make it difficult if you're depending on social connection and whatnot and you want to you want to get out there and get on those dates so i mean you're not going to get any dates by watching netflix right if you're sitting there all day nobody will know you exist so you're invisible right i went on a run this morning and i saw countless men and women dating potential for people right in my case, straight dude, dozens of women could potentially walk up to them and say, hey, thought you were cute, would love to get your number and take you out sometime. Something simple like that, or just say hi, whatever. I'm not very good at the social, um, per, per, you know, the social interaction, but maybe you're a very outgoing individual, and that's your jam good you're you're putting yourself out there right you're visible you don't even have to go up to people right i'm just saying like there's dozens of women and it might just be like a nod or a smile and maybe a dog stops you and you're now having a conversation with the individual and it's only because you went from invisibility to visibility that's literally it right and you go and you do the same routes over and over again you do the same hobbies or you follow the same interests or you go swimming or you do the dungeons and dragons and you do those hobbies over and over again you're going to start meeting the same people and then perhaps conversations develop or not don't expect anything really but you never know i mean hey if you're more introverted like me the dating apps okay go on the dating apps they are there for a reason and they are to be visible because there's people here that are watching or listening to this and saying shoot yeah i don't get out i'm isolated well maybe the dating apps are the solution for you and maybe the dating apps aren't working for you because well let's let's get into a couple more nouns here but uh, that's that's what you have to look for. And and honestly, with visibility, for a woman, the dating apps are gold. It's extreme visibility. You just have to set up a profile, throw up some photos, and then extreme visibility. You'll have countless men within an hour willing to go on a date with you so it's a very it doesn't matter really who you are if you're if you're a woman you'll you'll get countless matches so the dating apps are a very good approach for women um as long as your idealism doesn't get in the way right the prior noun so that's that's where i'm getting at with that one okay noun number four appearance Hmm. So, this is an interesting one, because it's maybe not appearance in the sense of what you might think. You see, 
the, your, your appearance to the world, if, you, if you're not getting dates, is a mess, right? People are taking one look at you and they're running away. Date number one, you wish. Date number two, not a chance. Your appearance is messed up. So what does this mean, appearance? This actually does not mean your typical like physical appearance that, oh, you're a hairy monster, and that's why you're not getting any dates. No, 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 no. Because there's some bearded men, and there's some Gandalfs out there, and there, there's a whole host of people with armpit hair, and, and somebody will match with them, right? So, like, it's, it's not that. It's, 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 it's an energy of you not wanting to be wherever it is you are. And you're appearing to be disinterested or you have some sort of an attitude that's holding you back. Or you're, you're being dishonest about who you're showing yourself to be. Right, so these dating apps, as we've talked about, you're maybe appearing to be somebody you're not. Okay, this is a hard one to describe because a lot of people get wrapped up in physical appearance. Physical is so critical, but no, because you could be completely overweight and still get dates. It's it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with the fact that let's say you're a nerd. That's, that's who you are in your core. You're, you're a total nerd. And yet you're communicating to the world that you are this all-American football athlete linebacker, which is just completely not true. Or you've completed in a hundred competitions and you're this machine. And then the reality is you actually aren't any of those. But you're just trying to be so impressive that... Uh, this all appears fake and people run away from that your appearance is not true to who you are you see if you like star wars tell people you like star wars you like movies tell people you like movies don't be so ashamed of who you're appearing to be and you see you could wrap appearance with confidence right you could say these two words these two nouns confidence and appearance they maybe they intermingle but you see you could be a socially anxious individual you could be an individual who has no confidence at all and you're shy and you have no ability to talk to women or men and you're still able to get dates so it's not so much confidence it's 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 more of an honest portrayal of who you appear to be your identity to the world right and your ownership of that identity that is what will attract people like your uh, your socially anxious depressed mess own that make jokes about it and people will probably resonate with hey oh whoa, whoa, whoa. like i resonate with that story and they'll connect with you because honesty and authenticity is very refreshing and yet we're appearing not to be that for some reason you're throwing up photos from your young adult years when you're in your 40s you're sort of living in the past or you're you're not living true to who you are so i just think you need to identify that you need to identify who you really are at the core and show that okay confidence self-esteem all of that kind of stuff i mean yeah People will say, oh, that's what you need. You probably will need that to get more dates beyond the first one, right? I'm not saying those are bad traits. They wrap into it, but uh, I, I think if you were just honest enough, people would want to keep going out with you and they want to meet you and, and, and get to know you, the imperfect you, 
because that is actually perfection is is all the flaws that you're showcasing that becomes very attractive actually that's i mean because let's be honest nobody is perfect <laughs> so like even Brad Pitt walks around in a cane when he's injured like let's be real here not everyone is able to walk on water. Actually, nobody is. So there you go. There's appearance. And let's let's finish off with the last noun here. Number five, hygiene. Okay. So you're really, 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 really smelly. And uh, you smell like the Las Vegas Strip. Well, look, I don't know how your date's going to go, but it might not last very long, and you're probably not going to get the second date. So hygiene. Look, you could easily get a, a first date, even if you smell terrible, okay? Like, people are able to land those first dates. So this is more of a, if you want more dates, you probably need to check yourself on this, right? And maybe you need somebody, like a friend or family member, to see what's going on here because if you want dates plural which is the title of this content then you'll need to dial this down i mean here are the basics brush your teeth keep things neat whether it's your i don't know your your outfit your your beard that you're growing whatever keep it presentable somewhat control the body odor wash the clothing buy new or non-smelly clothing right use a deodorant and or cologne you don't necessarily need the cologne but a deodorant would be helpful it doesn't have to even be a scented deodorant it has to be a deodorant that can help with the armpits and, uh, you know, I struggle with this, but I, I have like a, a salt, like a crystal deodorant. It has no smell. It has these salt crystals and that helps keep it dry under there. And it's like a natural one. You can find them. A lot of them are made in Thailand. And then I also do like a bit of a spray afterwards, both arms, and a nice scented spray. I also have aftershave. You know, you just put some aftershave on your face, not too much, and you're good. Sure, you could do a couple sprays of the cologne. Let's not make this a perfume parlor, though. It can be really basic. You don't have to smell like anything, really. You go with the non-scented stuff. It's just more a case of fixing that and honestly if you do smell really 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 bad there could be some medical reason that you need to get checked out for there could be the crappy food you're eating who knows right it could be a number of reasons it could be that your shirts are too tight honestly your shirts are so tight that the they wrap up into your armpits and then that builds heat and bacteria and that's literally What's happening is the smells are coming from this 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 tension in the armpit area because you're wearing tightly fitted clothes, which is what a lot of people do. Look, you just have to have a, a bare minimum approach to this, right? I mean, maybe also your dating photos. Maybe they give off this disgusting vibe, like th that you're not hygienic whatever that means <laughs> so you just have to get the basics in order and those are the five things the five nouns that are potentially holding you back from getting dates and i mean you're now a dating master right you're not overthinking anything you have a real world view of what people are all about you're ready to go out there and live your best life without worry. And things will work out. Things will be enjoyable. 
And if you remain single in a month, two months, a year, five years, 10 years, 50 years from now, it's okay. But uh, you trying, you falling in love and getting your heart broken a thousand times, well, that's worth it. And what's the alternative, really? Dying alone without scars or experience? Isn't that kind of boring? Get out there, you.